Yeah, I like that one. Nose size. Looks good. Nose position. No, it's fine the way it was. The fine way it was. Nose bridge size. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, it's fine the way it was. Bridge position, nose tip size. Yeah, keep it, keep it low. Nose tip position. There we go. Nostril size. Okay. Broken nose? I don't think I want to break his nose. He's looking really handsome, I gotta say. Looking really handsome. Um, mouth and jaw. Mouth shape. Oh boy, okay. Um, again, I don't want his lips to be so huge. Um, that's good. Mouth width. There we go. Mouth position, that's probably fine the way it is. I'm not really... Yeah, lip thickness. This is probably the thing that I wanna... Uh... I think it was fine where it was. Jawline. Uh... No, it's, it was fine the way it was. Fine the way it was. Jaw size, jowls. Um. Oh, I see. No, no, it's fine where it was. Chin size. Uh, yeah, the chin's fine. I don't want to mess with the chin. Adam's apple. No, it's, it's fine where it is. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to tweak it too much because the face I was fine with from the beginning. I don't really want scars, and I don't really want makeup on him. So, the only thing is, I kind of don't like the rough edges on his horns here. Um, is there another option? I guess not. I guess the horns have to be, they do have to be that shape. I mean, the, 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 bridge, the bridge that you put the horns together in have to be that shape. So, can they... Um, face shape. Head and ears, eye size, ears, your forehead. There really isn't much you can do with the, yeah, the forehead's pretty much staying that way. So, that's fine. That's really fine. Um, okay. Accept changes. Um, cool. All right, now we get to name our character. So, um, in Origins, Angelus was my Grey Warden, and he was named after the first word of my channel name, Angel. So, Angelus. My Hawk was named Clive after the very first character that I ever LP'd, which is Clive Shepard from my Mass Effect 3 Let's Play. So he became Clive Hawk. For my um, Inquisitor, I am going to then use the second word of my channel name and just simply call him Art. It'll be based on arts in Angel Arts. And I kind of think that that's a pretty cool name for a Canary anyway, because you've got someone like Sten who, you know, it's just one syllable straight to the point. Yeah, I know Sten is typically, is really his title, it's not really his name, but Art, you know, you could think of as like, short for Arthur, you can think of Art as just... I, but I really think that his full name actually is going to be Art. Art, our Canari. Um, yeah, let's do that. And Art's... he's he's a pretty handsome looking Canari. I mean, I... I tap that. <laughs> oh, did I really just say that? It's starting, guys. It's starting. Whew, okay. So, here we go. Okay, I saw this in the trailer, but I wasn't sure if it was somebody from the Chantry, because it's whoever it is has like this big headdress. And we're in the midst of the explosion right now, so... 
And I mean, look, glowy, so might as well go after it, right? Oh, it's like it's demon spider insectoid thing. Oh, that's grab, grab the hand, grab the hand. Oh, okay, this is where this is where they found him. This is where they find him. Oh, oh, I'm so excited. Ooh, this is so great. Oh, come on, Bioware. Ugh, oh, just... My body is ready. My body is to totally ready for this game. <sighs> okay, let's, let's do this. I don't know what's happening next. Tell me why we shouldn't kill you now. The Conclave is destroyed. Everyone who attended is dead. Except for you. I really like how his eyes... How Art's eyes appear in this light. It's, they're so cool. Click to select a response in the dialog wheel or pre press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to quickly select responses by position on the wheel. Um... You think I'm responsible? Explain this. Ooh, yes. It's on his left hand. I can't. What do you mean you can't? I don't know what that is. Or how it got there. You're lying! Oh boy. We need him, Cassandra. Some dialogues give you the opportunity to respond emotionally to situations. When these opportunities appear, special icons will highlight the emotion tied to the response. See, this is what I really liked about... This is what I, I wasn't a big fan of in the Dragon Age 2 dialogue wheel, because you pretty much had, you know, the diplomatic hawk, the sarcastic hawk, and the, and the pragmatic hawk. But that only fulfilled three tones only. Whereas in Origins, you had... There were ways that you could respond to somebody, and you could say yes or no to someone, but the way you said yes or the way you said no, the tone of what you used to agree or disagree to someone or just give them a response, you know, was... You know, you could kind of see that in the actual words of the choices in Origins, especially since they actually, like, wrote out everything you said because you didn't have a voiced warden at the time. So, um... I like that they kind of added this. It sounds as it looks like they're trying to marry the t the best of both worlds, marrying the voiced character dialogue wheel with the flexibility. In my opinion, the more flexibility in Origins. So this looks like a more sympathetic response. This is more of a pragmatic response. I'm confused, <laughs> like, like dense, Meryl-like response, and this one's like more of a threatening response. I I feel like art has a lot of art has a lot of heart and a lot of compassion and so i think he would be he would choose this one i can't believe it all those people dead do you remember what happened how this began oh liliana i remember running things were chasing me and then a woman a woman she reached out to me but then Go to the Ford camp, Liliana. I will take him to the rift. Ooh, does this mean what I think it means? Does this mean we have Cassandra in our... What did happen? It will be easier to show you. 
Okay. Oh boy. Sheesh. Oh wow. We call it the breach. The breach. It's a massive rift into the world of demons that grows larger with each passing hour. It's not okay. the only such rift, just the largest. All were caused by the explosion at the conclave. An explosion can do that? This one did. Unless we act, the breach may grow until it swallows the world. Ooh, that looks like it's smart. Okay, so that Each might be... the breach expands, your mark spreads, and it is killing you. It may be the key to stopping this, but there isn't much time. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> so there's a big giant rift in the sky, and I've got like a mini rift on my left hand. I'm like, uh, that's, you know, that doesn't make me seem a little guilty at all. The... You say it may be the key to doing what? Closing the breach. Whether that's possible is something we shall discover shortly. It is our only chance, however. And yours. Hmm. You still think I did this? To myself? Not intentionally. Something clearly went wrong. And if I'm not responsible? Someone is. And you are our only suspect. Convenient. You wish to prove your innocence? This is the only way. Yeah, I think Art's a little compassionate, so he'll he'll say this. I understand. Then I'll do what I can, whatever it takes. They have decided your guilt. Oh they boy. They need it. The people oh of boy. Haven mourn our most holy, divine Justinia. We're in Haven? The, the conclave was hers. Oh, wow. It was We're a in Haven, guys. It was a peace between mages and Templars. She brought their leaders together. Now they are dead. Oh, right. That was why all the Templars... Like the sky, but we must think beyond ourselves, as she did. Wow. Until the breach is sealed. There will be a trial. I can promise no more. Okay. Come. It is not far. Where are you taking me? Your mark must be tested on something smaller than the breach. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, guys. Woo! Okay. So looks like we have... Do we have Cassandra in our party? Is she... Oh yeah, she's following us. Although I can't, I can't select her though. That's weird. All right, well, technically she's in our party. So because it technically looks like we just gained Cassandra into our into our party, um, I went ahead and she ended up being the very first uh, character up on um, up on our wall here, which is exciting, really exciting. Hopefully, I'll be able to fill this up pretty quickly as I as I gather more of the characters and stuff. So, um, technically I should probably put Liliana up there too, now that I think about it. Although, I don't know if she's technically like... Yeah, let's put Liliana up there. Just, just so that our wall's not as barren. Okay, so we got Liliana, Liliana up there. Um, these are all pictures, images that I got from DeviantArt. Um, I will be sure to put down in the links, uh, put down in links below in the description, um, where I... You know, the, the, the sources of all this art so that they can get their credits. Really lovely, really awesome, also awesome art there. Um, but anyway, so the last thing I'm going to do before I end this video is I'm just going to go ahead because I really wanted to see if I can get to my codex because it looks like we got stuff on our codexes. 
the Inquisitor's Path. As Inquisitor's power grows, it gains enemies in equal measure. It will take an iron will to bring Thetis back from the brink of chaos, but that is precisely what must be done. Hmm. Okay. Where is my quest map? Oh. Okay, that's cool. So we've got the Wrath of Heaven. Cassandra wants to test the effects of the mark left by the blast. There is a rift nearby that may be suitable. Cool. Okay. Okay, awesome. This is a huge map. Okay. We're, we are at the Frostback Mountains. Okay, we are. That's pretty cool that we're in Haven. Um, and then Journal, Codex. I already looked at the Journal, Codex. Okay, so just so you guys know, I'm the last thing I'm going to do is, is read through stuff in my Codex. Um, a lot of you might not be interested in that, which is why I'm warning you about it now. Um, this is pretty much what I'm going to be doing for the rest until the end of this video. And, uh, but I, because this is my very first time playing through this game, it's blind, I kind of want to savor it as much as possible. And I want to be as thorough as I can with it, with this Let's Play. So I am going to stop every once in a while and take time to read the codexes. And as a favor to you, I will try to include, whenever I do that, um, uh, places where you can click to skip over the codex part, if you're really not, not, not all that interested in having me read through it. Um, but obviously, if you're if you are, then it'll be available to you there. So, let's start with characters. Adar the Vashoth. The Kanari and Parvalin live under the Kune, a religious and philosophical doctrine dictating every aspect of their society. Art Adar's parents. Oh, Art Art Adar, Adar is is Art's last name, and hey, he's got the same initials A A as Angel Arts. Sounds like it's meant to be. Art Adar's parents left that restrictive life before he was born, settling in the free marches and raising their child outside the Kune. Kunari brought up outside their society are still feared, shunned, or misunderstood by most people in the South. The average citizen of Orle or Ferelden assumes they're cold-blooded thralls or vicious bandits. When Art manifested a gift for magic, his parents arranged for a mage among the Talvashath to teach him how to control his talents. He joined the Valo Kas mercenary company as a young adult, making a name for himself over the years as a capable and powerful mage. Art was hired to provide protection at the Conclave as a neutral party to stand between the Templars and human mages. Okay, that's pretty cool. As a neutral party. After the disastrous explosion at the Temple of Sacred Ashes that killed the Divine... Oh my gosh, wait! The Divine, did this mean... Oh my gosh, Divine Justinia died in that explosion? Right, because that was... Okay. At the Temple of Sacred Ashes. I didn't realize that. So this, this is the conclave. Okay, okay. Let me, let me, hold on. So over the weekend, I read, um... I read the Mask Empire novel. And without, like, giving away spoilers at all, I mean, the main thing that you learn from that novel is that uh, Empress Selene asked uh, Justinia, asked uh, Divine Justinia, to stop the mage um, Templar conflict once and for all. She asked her to do that because, you know, she's the the Templars, you know, and the Circle. They're supposed to, you know, report to and obey the Chantry. So. Um, Divine Justinia agreed, and she asked the Templars to stand down. The Templars refused, so then they seceded and broke off from the Chantry and decided to, you know, we're going to go kill off all those mages anyway. And then the mages, of course, defended themselves and killed off Templars, and things just things didn't get resolved. So Justinia, Divine Justinia, who, by the way, is the same um, person, the same uh, priest who rescued Liliana, from her, um, from her life, her original life as a bard and spy in uh, Liliana's song, she she became just uh, divine Justinia. She had one more desperate attempt to find peace between the Templars and the Mages, and called them to a neutral conclave, which I guess I realize now is the Temple of Sacred Ashes. That's so cool. Um, to try to talk things over peacefully and find a resolution. And then this happens, and now Divine Destiny is dead. That's... 
reminds me so much of what happened with Anders. Stupid, sexy Anders. Rumors that the mysterious mark on his hand is a sign of the Maker's favor were spread by those who claimed they saw the divine prophet Andraste herself lead Adar out of the Fade. Oh, so... So, could it be that that woman that we saw was late, was Andraste herself? Hmm. Cassandra Pentagast. I am fully aware of the intent behind your predecessor's declaration. Lord Seeker Lambert. Oh, Lambert. Yeah, he's a character in the Sunder, which I'm not going to say much about. Lord Seeker Lambert pried the Templars away from Chantry control and led them into an assault upon all mages for reasons you both find justified. I, however, and I'm certain when the Seekers of Truth went from, uh, from guarding against injustice to, perpet to perpetrating it, if you truly believe... Oh, Lord Seeker Lucius. Okay, this is for Lord Seeker Lucius. If you truly believe that is not the case, I suggest you look out a window at the chaos this war has caused and ask yourself if Thetis will recover even if you are victorious. I remain at Justin, as Divine Justinia's right hand and will stay there even if you brand me traitor. I am sorry, but there is too much at stake to swerve from the path we willingly followed at the Chantry's Foundation. From a letter by Seeker Cassandra Pentagast to Lord Seeker Lucius Corin. Divine Justini V. Divine Justinia V rose to power after the death of Divine Beatrix III in the year 934 of the Dragon Age. Little is known of Dorothea's background before she joined the Chantry as an initiate, but she proved to be a liberal and daring thinker, willing to take a former bard and lay sister Leliana, just like I said, as a close advisor. Makes sense. A headstrong devotion to her own agenda and rumored support of the Mage Rebellion earned her no small dislike from the powerful priests long used to controlling access to the Divine. In the year 940 the dra of the Dragon Age, Divine Justinia called a summit, intending to negotiate a truce between the Mage Rebellion and the Templars splintered from the Chantry. The Divine Conclave was held at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, the most holy place in Thetis. Okay, that makes sense, because Angelus... The, my warden in Origins found the Sacred Ashes, showed it to Brother and TV, and it makes sense that it's now the most holy place in Thetis. Before a resolution could be reached, a cataclysmic explosion destroyed the conclave, consumed the temple, rent the sky, and shattered the world's hopes for peace. Yeah, that's rough. Divine Destiny of the Fifth perished in the Temple of Sacred Ashes. The Chantry flounders... The Chantry, don't you mean like the Chantry Founders? The chant oh, no, no, no. The Chantry Flounders leaderless in the wake of her death, and its fate grows increasingly uncertain. If order is not restored to Thetis, Justinia V might be remembered as the Chantry's final divine. Well, not if I can help it. Let's see about that. Groups. The Canari. The people of the Kuhn are perhaps the least understood group in Thetis. The Canari Wars were brutal, but so was the Chantry Schism. So was the fall of the Imperium. Some of this misunderstanding is an accident of nature. The race we call Kunari are formidable. Nature has given them fierce horns and strange eyes and the ignorant look on them and see monsters. Some is an accident of language. Few among the Kuhn's people speak the common tongue, and fewer speak it well. In a culture that strives for mastery, to have only a passable degree of skill is humiliating indeed, and so they often keep quiet among foreigners out of shame. But much of it is a result of the culture itself. The Canari view their whole society as a single creature, a living entity whose health and well-being are the responsibility of all. This is what stuff that we started learning, that we had learned from Talus a bit in um, uh, Mark of the Assassin. Each individual is only a tiny part of a whole, a drop of blood in its veins, important not for itself, but for what it is to the whole creature. Because of this, the Canari most our outsiders meet all belong to the army, which the Kuhn regards as if it were the physical body, arms, legs, eyes, and ears, the things a creature needs in order to interact with the world, like the senses, basically. One cannot get to know a person solely by studying his hand or his foot, and so one cannot truly meet the Canari until one has visited their cities. That is where their mind and soul dwell. Makes sense. The Saharan and Parvalin. In the Saharan and Parvalin, one can truly see the Canari in their entirety. 
There, the unification of the canari into a single being is most evident. Workers whom the Kuhn calls the mind produce everything the canari require. The soul, the priesthood, seeks a greater understanding of the self, the world, and exhorts the body and mind to continually strive for perfection. The body serves as the go-between for the mind, the soul, and the world. Everyone and everything has a place, decided by the Kuhn, in which they work for the good of the whole. It is a life of certainty, of equality, if not individuality. From the writings of the seer of Kant R. 841 um, to the bless Blessed. That's interesting. See, I, I'm I'm really glad I'm I'm taking the time to read all of these, all of these um, um, excerpts, especially since I didn't realize that the divine was one of the people that was killed in there. Um, we already we already read this. History. The conclave. It has been a year of little more than chaos. Yes, the mages voted to dissolve the circle of magi, but I will point out that this void vote came only after increased restrictions were placed on them following the unfortunate events in Kirkwall. What other choice did they have? Yes, the Templar Order abandoned their duties and elected to pursue the mages to bring them back in line, but after a thousand years in which their sole role was the mages' keepers, what else could one expect? They envisioned the war over quickly. A single battle that would see the mages resolve crumble, after which they would meekly return to confinement. That did not happen. This conflict could drag on forever, with advantages on neither side. Both Templars and mages see this, and thus they have agreed to come to the conclave. This is our chance. Word needs to be said which have not been said. A compromise must be reached because there is no other choice. I believe this with all my heart. I am not without fault in all this. Perhaps I push too hard for reform or not hard enough. The maker has seen fit to give me another chance. I will not squander it. The Temple of Sacred Ashes is where together we will make history, and with luck we will be remembered kindly for it. From the journals of Divine Justinia V. Yeah, I figured that was Justinia. Dragon Age 941. And then this happened. The Breach. What does it mean to pierce the veil? that which un separates our world from the realm of dreams and demons. For the average man and woman, it is a frightening thought to consider just how fragile this separation actually is. The veil is not a physical curtain, not a structure limited to a particular place. It is everywhere. It is in their home, in the streets where they walk in, in farmers' fields as well as remote mountain bales. At any moment, it could be torn to shreds, allowing demons and other horrors to flood into our world like water through a burst dam. Known lore tells us that small rifts can be sealed. But what about a large one? What if some catastrophic magical event created a rift so large and horrific it weakened the integrity of the veil as a whole? Such a breach would threaten our entire world, turning concerns about occasional demonic intrusion into a charming anecdote compared to the monsters we would then face. If there is anything to be done, any reason we should look at magic with fear, it is that possibility more than any other. From the True Third of Magic by Lady Seeker Alandra Vale. Oh wait! Vale! That's Sebastian's last name, you guys. That's Sebastian's mom. Tutorials. Status effects. Abilities marked. Um, the party members and enemies can be affected by or innately possess a range of status effects. The list below provides a brief synopsis of general terms. Debilitating effects. Disabled includes frozen, paralyzed, stunned, and asleep. The target cannot move or take any action. This effect usually has a limited duration or an action that ends it. Taking damage causes a sleeping target to wake up. I would hope so. No, you can hit disabled targets with abilities marked as detonators to cause devastating combo effects. Okay, so the cross-class combos make a return. That's awesome. Taking damage over time includes burning, poisoned, bleeding. The target takes ongoing damage of a given type over a period of time. Chilled, the target moves and attacks more slowly. Confused, the target will attack its own allies. Knocked down, the target lies prone on the ground and will require a few moments to get back on its feet. Panicked. The target stops attacking and moves randomly around the battlefield. Taking damage ends the effect. Okay. So getting hurt makes you not panicked anymore? I guess it's sort of like, like getting a you know slap across the face or something. Shocked. The target's magical resistance is reduced. It will take bonus damage from magical attacks. Slowed. The target moves more slowly. 
Swarm. The target is covered in bees. It takes ongoing damage and has a chance to become panicked as a result of the stinging. That's right, I remember the jar of bees from someone. Sunder. The target's armor is reduced. It will take bonus damage from physical attacks. Taunted. The target who preferentially attacks the character who used the taunting ability to them to the exclusion of all others, moving to engage them if necessary. Weakened. The target's attacks do less damage. Vulnerable. The target will take bonus damage from attacks of this type, such as fire, cold, or spirit. Beneficial effects. Barrier. A magical effect that protects the target from damage. Incoming attacks must deplete the barrier before the target loses health. Okay, because this is where we no longer have healing magic. Or at least healing is a lot harder to come by in this game than in previous games. So a lot of things that we have instead is ways to avoid, is either to mitigate damage or avoid it entirely. So we'll see. I'm curious to see how that balance works. You know, how the lack of healing, because... I feel, honestly, I feel like healing can be a crutch for a lot of people. Now, granted, I enjoy being the healer because I like that mentality. I like the idea of being able to attend to people's wounds. Um, it's just the healer persona is what I enjoy. But I think I can still manage to enjoy this game regardless. I mean, considering how I always wanted to play a priest or a cleric in fantasy games like this, and there is no like priest or cleric class, I think I'll manage. Some abilities, spells, and weapons do bonus damage against the target's barrier. Guard, a type of combat training that protects the target from damage. Incoming attacks must deplete the guard before the target loses health. So this sounds like more of a martial thing. Guard sounds like more like a martial thing, whereas barrier is more of a magical thing. It sort of reminds me of the shield, armor, and barrier of Mass Effect, of the Mass Effect games. Incoming attacks must deplete the guard. Okay. Some abilities, spells, and weapons do bonus damage against a target's guard. A target with an active guard resists being staggered or knocked down. Resistance. The target takes less damage from attacks of this type of damage, such as fire, cold, or spirit. Greater resistance. The target takes little or no damage from attacks of this type, rendering it almost completely ineffective. And immunity. The target is completely immune on to one or more debilitating effects, such as burning or asleep. Cool. And that is all of the codex stuff that we have so far. So, okay. Well, guys, thank you again for watching this very first episode of Gay Let's Play Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying it so far. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to try to bump up the quality of the graphics for you. Because um, it seems like my computer is stabilizing. So, I'm really looking forward to this, guys. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll join me for the rest of the videos. Until next time, everybody, love yourselves and love each other.